Beloved, today we stand on the verge of the great fast. We were being prepared by the scripture readings and the hymns of the three preceding Sundays, and this weekend, yesterday and today, we receive our final instructions, so to speak, the final directions for this journey. And it is a journey. It is a journey from exile, as Adam and Eve were exiled from paradise. So our journey is from the exile to return to paradise. It is a journey away from sin. It is a journey into our heart to seek Messiah Jesus, who makes our heart into his chariot throne. And our loving Lord gives to us the guide to seek him. Yesterday in the first 16 verses of chapter 6 for Matthew's Gospel, and today the next eight verses, he gives us the three elements of every fast. Almsgiving, prayer, fasting. Almsgiving, giving to those in need. Last Sunday, we learned of this necessity for us in the Gospel of the Last Judgment. Giving help to those who are hungry, thirsty, naked, poor, sick, and imprisoned. Use our substance, our money, to serve Christ by ministering to them. But do not make a big deal about how much we give or what we do. The Lord who sees what we do in secret knows. Blessed Melania the Elder once brought 300 pounds of silver into the desert of Egypt and gave it to St. Isidore for the needs of the monks and the nuns of the desert. And St. Isidore sat there with his palm fronds plating a basket and he never even looked up. And he told his steward to give it to the poorest monasteries who were far away from that place. And Saint Melania herself says, I stood there expecting to be honored and glorified by him for the gift. And when I heard nothing from him, I said to him, I want you to know, sir, how much there is. 300 pounds of silver. And without even looking up, St. Isidore said, He to whom you have brought them has no need of a scale. He who weighs the mountains knows how much better, how much silver there is. If it was to me that you gave it, you did well to speak up. But if it was to God you gave this silver, God, who do not despise the two copper coins of the widow, keep quiet. Thus did St. Melania learn the meaning of the Lord's words from yesterday's Gospel. Take care that you do not do your charitable deeds before others to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. And the second element after almsgiving is prayer, something that's to be a part of our everyday life, but intensified in Lent. Look at the schedule for this week and every week, the pre-sanctified liturgies, the Saturday liturgies, the great Compline. Messiah Jesus teaches us the prayer that bears his name, the Lord's Prayer because he teaches it to us to dare call his father our father. The earliest Christians prayed this prayer three times a day, morning, noon, and evening, calling God our father three times a day, glorifying his name, asking his kingdom to come in its fullness, 
and that as his will is in heaven, so be it also on earth. And asking for daily bread, not for the tomorrow, not for the day after, but today. So simple a prayer that our Lord teach us. Asking forgiveness of our debts, our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And this is where today's gospel picks up from yesterday. Messiah Jesus teaches us today that in our prayers to God in Lent and outside of Lent, in praying the prayer he himself taught us, the forgiving of others is vital. Our Heavenly Father will forgive us if we forgive those who sin against us. Again, simple words. A child can understand this. And a warning. If we do not forgive, then our Father will not forgive us. Forgive others, and so pour oil on troubled waters, finding forgiveness from our Father. Do not forgive others, and pile hot coals on our own head as we miss the forgiveness that could be ours. The third element of any Lenten season is fasting, leaving aside certain foods and turning to others, so that as we find our body hungry, our soul hungers for the living bread who has come down from heaven, Messiah Jesus. As with almsgiving, we are not to draw attention to ourselves in fasting. Nor is our fasting a list of rules to be checked off, as though it's a shopping list or the item is on an exam to be completed. For that's how the Pharisee looked at fasting, boasting of how he fasted twice a week. Our fasting is to help us lose the taste for the world in order to develop a taste for the things of God. Our fasting is a training in attention, attending to the Lord. Hunger of the body is to become hunger of the soul for God. But let us not think that our fasting does anything for God. As our bishop's father in God, Elder Emilianos, put it, asceticism, which is athletic training, it's what monks and nuns, what we Christians do. Athletes train. They train to get to the Olympics. They train to run, to jump, and all the other things that an athlete must do to be ready for the contest. So this is our contest. And fasting is part of that. It's part of our training. And Elder Emilianos said that asceticism, including our fasting, is a way in which I, a human being, set about attracting the attention of God. Does God have need of such activity? I will only say this, it is something I can do, and God wants me to do what I can. In a manner of speaking, then, asceticism is like putting on my best clothes. It's my preparation in order to seek to want, to desire actively, to love, and finally to receive God. Even so, he and I are still at a great distance. What we're attending to now are the preparations, just as we would sweep the house in preparation for a visit by a guest. So I give expression to my inner disposition by enduring the coldness and filth that is in, within me, by accepting my nakedness and acknowledging it before God. In doing this, 
I express my desire for God. Asceticism, our fasting, is the way I cry out to Him. Let us cry out to God by our fasting, through the giving of alms to those in need, and by our prayer. And above all, all these three must be crowned by love, by loving kindness, loving kindness for others, so that we find the Lord in our heart. May almsgiving, prayer, and fasting that we undertake be a pointer to the kingdom which is to come, which is yet to come in its fullness, of which table we will receive even today as we begin our journey of the great 40 days by recalling the saving passion of Messiah Jesus as we journey to him, our bridegroom, at his wedding feast upon the cross. <laughs>